Hello, welcome to this video. Today I am going to be talking through my thought process when creating stuff in dreams. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is foreshortening. We need to be aware of it so that we can control it, you know? Sometimes we are struggling with it, but I want to teach in a way where you have full control over foreshortening because I think working on a 2D screen and being used to working from one point of view is what messes up the foreshortening and that's really important when doing stuff in 3D because we can only judge from the TV screen which is a 2D plane and what we're actually working with is not 3D but a foreshortened version of 3D that's what I wanted to kind of emphasize is that you know even though this is a 3D object you are still observing it from the 2D screen so you know you can get away with a lot of things here say this is a we know it's a chalkboard but you can still get the same effect of a chalkboard because the camera doesn't see that we can just draw the side of it and then we're done that's the advantage of foreshortening because now it just looks the same as this right and then it has the shadow And if you look at it from this side, they look almost identical. But as soon as you rotate it around, you can see the staggering difference. That is what foreshortening is. You can get away with a lot of things if you understand foreshortening and um, you don't have to model everything. For example, you can get away with a lot of stuff just by playing around with the foreshortening. But then again, if you want to do actual 3D stuff, foreshortening can be something troublesome because while you're working with something from this angle, let's say you're modeling a nose, right? And you're looking at the nose from the front and then you're modeling away but then you, when you look to the side it's flat so what you want to do is make it like pinocchio's nose so this is what foreshortening is like if you look at it from the this point of view it looks it looks like a normal nose but then you kind of look at the side it is Pinocchio so you know foreshortening can kind of be troublesome when we're working in a 3d space so the way I go around it or control it is I use sketching which I guess it's called 2d projection and then the third one I use blocking, which is kind of like an extension of 2D projection. I kind of bounce between both of these things, depending on which one is faster to do and where I'm at. But essentially 3D blocking is like sketching, but in 3D. And then 2D projection is sketching things out and then translating that sketch into 3D. So it's kind of like yin and yang, they kind of work together. And I'll try and explain how these things help control the foreshortening issue. So when we were talking about Pinocchio before, and when you don't want a flat nose or a Pinocchio nose, you want a specific kind of nose, 
you know, I can sketch it out to get an idea of what that nose would look like. So I can sketch out the length of it, like I want it to extend out this much. And you can see, like, how fast it is to just sketch it out and kind of um, work loose and just sketch it out, you know? And then from here, you can literally just, like, sculpt on top of it. And kind of fill in that space. That is 2D projection in a nutshell. Easy like that, except not really that simple because then you've got the front view to deal with. And that's the thing for shortening is causing that issue because it looks good from the side, but then when you look at this side, it doesn't look like what you want it to look like. So what I can do, I can sketch the front view of this. Like once I've got the sketch in place, I can use this as a guide to connect the dots. And this is where blocking comes in. I'm rotating it from side to side like this or something like that. It's 2D projection, but then you're also blocking things out. So then you're looking from this side, looking from the front, making sure like it's in line with the sketch, making sure like it's the kind of length of that sketch. And then from here, you can then kind of connect the dots together, but with a blend amount. And you can also turn off the sketch and then just um, work like this and kind of um, improvise it if you wanted to. But, you know, the sketch is just a guide on how you want to sculpt it. Now it looks kind of weird from the side. So then I can use the sketch to line up where the nostrils need to go. That is pretty much how you can use like a 2D sketch to kind of plan out stuff. Sketching it out like this is useful because you can kind of see the measurements of it. Another way of doing it is you can skip the whole 2D projection thing and just kind of block it out um, with really primitive shapes. So if like this one looks kind of like a nose, and it's basically like sketching, but for 3D. It's like the kind of sketching equivalent. But instead of like sketching it and then kind of sculpting it, you can use like these rough shapes to kind of sketch it out. Like, because I'm not looking at like the actual shape. What I'm looking at is like the kind of line work that's running on it so i'm looking at the line work here like this like if i were sketching it out but if you have shapes you can already see the lines that it's creating and if you use the right shapes like say a sphere like i like to work rough first to try and understand like the shape and then if you select it all and convert to a painting you can change the opacity of this and then use this as a guide to sculpt like you have like points of reference 
that you can work with and you know the approximate volume of it. And sometimes it's faster to do it that way. That's what you can do. Like you can either 2D project it, sketch it out to try and figure out something really complex or just block it out. And you know, things that do get complex is like hair. Because how do you sculpt hair? What I do is I think of like the volume. And then what I do is I block out the hair. This is like if I was trying to work out what the hair looks like in 3D. I might kind of um, turn it a bit so that there's more depth to it. But you can see like how the sketch helps sell what it looks like from the camera's point of view. And like I was saying before, you can get away with a lot from the camera's point of view with foreshortening. So in a way, like if you're just working from the camera's point of view, it doesn't matter if it's like completely accurate in 3D. So it doesn't need to really wrap around anything. As long as you can see like the silhouette of it from the camera's point of view, because that's what we look at. We look at the silhouette, we can't see the depth. And that's like the beauty with working on a TV screen with foreshortening, because you can get away with a lot with like actual depth. But you know, it's a different story if you want it to be fully 3D and something you want to see in virtual reality. So in that case, you got to kind of work from the camera's point of view to make sure that silhouette is correct and how the hair kind of wraps around, which is why the sketch is essential to maintaining whether it will look like okay from the camera's point of view because when you move this away from the camera it's going to feel smaller so what i try to do is like i try to make sure like it is 3d it is wrapping around this person's head but then this sketch is a reminder on whether things are lining up with the camera's point of view so that that silhouette is being maintained and thus like the challenge when you're working in a 3d space especially when it's foreshortened because now like when you look at it from the camera's point of view you should be able to tell like clearly the silhouette of it but then if you look from the side, it needs to make sense constructually. But, you know, you still want to maintain, like, that nice flow from the camera's point of view. So, yeah, even though this is a 3D object, most of the judgment that I make is from the foreshortened perspective, which is the 2D kind of plane which the camera is looking through. And the things I look at is stuff that you would do in 2D. So I look at like just basic drawing stuff, like the silhouette of the character and whether the silhouette is nice and clear. I don't think of it as a 3D object, I think of it as what do I want to achieve on this 2D kind of plane. This is where most of the kind of drawing or sculpting happens is on the 2D plane. And then things I look at is the shading, like there needs to be highlights here. Um, there needs to be some highlights here. 
you know, the thing with Dreams is that it has a really good lighting system. So instead of manually painting in anything, you just, you know, place the lights and it automatically kind of shades in the geometry. So you can play around with the lighting and get the kind of shading that you want on the object. And um, control like the gradient and how smooth or, you know, how sharp or how, you know, bright certain areas are. So that's how you can kind of shade in stuff in Dreams. Like, if I were working on paper with a pencil, I would have to manually kind of shade it in with a pencil. But here, you don't have to shade anything. You just place the light, and then it already does it for you, which is pretty uh, incredible. But in order to get the shading to work and behave the way you want it to behave, you know, the object has to be three-dimensional so that the light behaves the way you want it to behave. Areas that are kind of steep and on an angle like this, it will, like, catch a lot of the light so it will become brighter. And then if it's away from the light, it becomes like a mid-tone. And then if it's really away from the light like this, you get the shadow. And that's all I look at. I look at the color and like the shading and the type of color that I want to achieve. It's just 2D drawing again, you know. You think about the 2D drawing from here, like this part of the character is not rendered or anything, but then this side is rendered it's tailored to the foreshortening which is like the camera's point of view but then if you want something that's absolutely three-dimensional the foreshortening has to work from every angle you have to work at multiple angles and then try and find a balance between each angle so here's Gollum so again, I'm using like the 2D projection. So yeah, I'm looking at it from the camera's point of view. So I'm still looking at the 2D stuff like silhouette like this. But then I look at it from the side and then judge the silhouette from the side, just like the nose, the Pinocchio nose that we did but this is more complex than a nose. Then I look at the back, check the silhouette and the outlines, the other side. Then there's also the top angle. So there is like an overall kind of pose that you do. And I solve that by using blocking. And, you know, it's just like, for me at least, if you use these techniques like 2D projection and 3D blocking, um, it's just drawing in 2D because, you know, it's a 3D object, but you're still working from like the 2D perspective, which is like the foreshortened 3D. So to conclude, foreshortening is pretty much a 3D object being squashed and flattened onto a 2D plane. So right now, if you look away from the screen and at your surroundings, we live in a three-dimensional reality. And the only reason why is because we see things stereoscopically. So we see things with two eyes, and they cross over and that allows us to see depth. Now for shortening, if we close one eye right now and have a look really carefully, there is no depth and everything is flat. And this point of view is the same 
kind of space that we work with when we're working in dreams on a TV screen.